Before you ask, I am most definitely team Jacob. Jacob, my love. Okay, but like, is that even, okay, team Jacob for me. I know Bella's in love with Edward. I'm only gonna ship her with Edward, obviously, but team Jacob for me. Maybe that's why it was so easy for me to see Charlie's perspective, I don't know. But whoever suggested in the comments that I do Twilight from Charlie's perspective, you know who you are. Thank you very much. Cause it is kind of hilarious how out of the loop Charlie is. Y'all are certainly in for a wild ride, but before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is glassesusa.com. This is literally the best time to buy these beauties. GlassesUSA.com is one of the biggest eyewear retailers in the U.S. offering over 10,000 prescription eyeglasses and sunglasses at up to 70% off retail prices starting at only $39. And you know what's even crazier? This holiday season GlassesUSA.com has so many exclusive offers that you can't find anywhere else. Plus if you have FSA or HSA dollars that you've been saving all year you'll basically get your glasses for free. So check out these holiday offers by clicking the link in the description box. Now you may be thinking Amanda shopping for glasses online seems kind of hard like there's so many options how will I know if they even look good on me. Well, it just so happens that GlassesUSA.com has this really neat try-on tool, which I actually use to help me find my perfect pair of glasses. I certainly wouldn't want to look goofy on this channel. So after using the tool, I found three really awesome frames. The ones that I'm wearing right now are the Atoto Arno in silver. They make me feel really sophisticated and elegant. Then I got some sunglasses, the Rebel Star in black. And these ones make me feel really important and luxurious. And lastly, I got these, the Atoto Lataro in gold. And these ones kind of want to make me drive a convertible and look really cool. If you're still not sold, GlassesUSA.com is a risk-free shopping experience experience with free shipping, free returns, and 100% money back guarantee within 14 days. And if you have the Klarna app, you can even buy now and pay later. Go to GlassesUSA.com now and check out their holiday offers. Click the links in the top of my description box to get all the details. Thank you again to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video and enjoy the show, folks. Hello everyone, welcome to Storytime with Charlie. I'm gonna take this off, it's really hard to talk. So here's the deal. I live in Forks, Washington, a very moist and dark place. I married real young to a woman named Renee, and we had a daughter named Bella. Renee then took Bella and left me, which was not ideal. They went off to live in Arizona, and Renee met this guy named Phil. Meanwhile, I'm still alone, though I'm not unemployed or anything. I'm the chief of police, not to brag or anything. I would only get to see Bella for a month every summer. But then when she was 17, she decided she wanted to come to live with me in Forks. And this is because Renee is traveling around with Phil because he's like a minor league baseball player or something. Now here's everything you need to know about Bella. She's clumsy and not like the other girls. She's an old soul who likes reading books, who's pretty but doesn't know it. You get the picture. I already registered her for high school and got her a tastefully used truck from a good friend Billy Black. When we get to the house, Bella unpacks and whatnot and we settle into this new routine where she cooks my meals and I pretend not to hear her crying secretly at night in her room. I work a lot so me and Bella don't really interact that much except for when we eat dinner together and honestly I don't think either of us mind because we're not talkers. But after Bella's first day of school I could tell that she had it kind of rough and I was about to say something really sweet and fatherly when she brought up the Cullens. And this really set me off because the rest of the town, especially Billy, really loves to talk shit about them but look they seem like a decent enough family. Dr. Cullen's a brilliant surgeon. The kids have never caused me any trouble. They go camping regularly. What a fun family outing, am I right? Anyway, the weeks go by and one day it snows and we all know how clumsy Bella is, right? So I made an effort to wake up extra early to put snow chains on her tires, you know, as a precaution, only to get a call later that day saying that Bella was hit by a car. I speed over to the school and see her being loaded into an ambulance on a stretcher with a neck brace on. Apparently this kid named Tyler was driving too fast and he slid on the ice and he was about to hit Bella as she was standing outside of her truck when Edward Cullen pulled her to the side and managed to save her. Somehow, Edward came out of this thing unscathed. Bella hit her head, but apparently didn't have a concussion. Meanwhile, Tyler was absolutely wrecked. Anyway, life goes on, right? One day, Bella fainted in biology class. She never did have a stomach for gore. Then one weekend, she went down to a beach near La Push, which is by the reservation. And she went with a few of her friends, and I know the parents of these friends, so I know it's a pretty good group of kids. And you know, it'll be good for her to socialize for once. Not that I'm one to talk. Then one night while we're eating dinner, Bella tells me that she wants to go to Seattle on a Saturday by herself to go shopping into a bookstore or something. But guess what's happening on that particular Saturday? The school dance. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe she's trying to escape because homegirl can't get a date. So even though I'm hesitant, you know, to let my 17 year old daughter go on this trip alone, I'm, I'm not gonna stop her. I wouldn't want her to be sad and alone. Might as well get a trip out of it. Then, you know, as the date to the dance gets closer, she asks me if she can go dress shopping with these girls named Angela and Jessica. Even though she's said she didn't want to go to the dance, but I let her go just in case these girls can somehow convince her to go to the dance. Although I know better than to hope that Bella will make a single reasonable decision in her life. Before she left for this trip, she kept fussing, writing me notes and instructions on how to make my dinner, as if I weren't a middle-aged man who's been living by himself for the past 17 years. That day, Bella came home early from the shopping trip and it looked like she had been crying, which wasn't great. So now she's totally set on going to Seattle instead of the dance on Saturday. Then the Thursday before the dance, Billy and Jacob Black show up 
about her house. They ended up staying for dinner and watching the game and it was a little reunion of sorts because I had been kind of pissed at Billy for how he'd been talking about the Cullens. But you know what now? Water under the bridge. And then you'll never believe this. The Friday before the Seattle trip, you know, the one that she's been going on and on about, she says she doesn't want to go. So I'm like, okay, great. So that means you're going to go to the dance, right? And she said, no. You know what she did? She went straight to bed real early. I thought she was gonna sneak out or something, but I went to check on her and sure enough, she was fast asleep. So then in my head, I'm like, okay, she's just an antisocial girl, didn't want to go to the dance, maybe didn't even get asked. You know what? That's, that's fair enough. So then the next day, literally the next day, we're having a lovely family dinner when Bella says that this morning she went over to the Cullens. And I was like, okay, that's weird. That's a little bit out of the blue. Why did you go to the Cullens? And you know what she said? She said, oh, well, that's because I have a date with Edward Cullen tonight and he wants me to meet his parents. What? Oh, hang on. It appears that I'm having an aneurysm. So I'm like, is he your boyfriend? And she says, sort of. Now what the fuck? Because literally last night, she was saying how she wasn't interested in any of the boys in Forks and went to bed at 9 p.m. instead of going to the dance like a loser. So now she's here saying that she has a boyfriend and this is the first time she's even mentioning it to me, despite the fact that she's literally going to meet his parents tonight. She tells me that Edward's taking her to play baseball with his family and that he'll be here in a few minutes to pick her up. Gee, yeah, thanks for the heads up. So he comes over, he seems polite enough and I tell him not to keep her out too late. They go to leave and I look out on the driveway and see this absolute monster of a jeep. I'm talking the tires are higher than Bella's waist. I'm gonna regret this aren't I? And sure enough I'm chilling in the living room when I hear Bella come back earlier than expected from the state. I hear her shout go away Edward and then slam the door behind her. Uh oh. She turns to me crying and yells at me to leave her alone before running up to her room and slamming the door. So then I go up to her room and start banging on the door and ask her what the fuck happened. I can hear her frantically packing and saying that she's going home and so I'm like Bella don't do anything rash just tell me what happened and then she said she broke up with him okay well now i'm confused suddenly she opens the door and pushes past me full duffel bag on her arm so i run and grab her before she can storm out the door there's no way i'm letting her leave like this then she starts saying how she likes him but that's the problem she can't put any more roots down in forks she doesn't want to end up trapped in this boring ass town like renee and make the same mistake she did god damn okay so you know naturally i took that personally and i was like okay well it's nighttime you can't leave right now i try to at least be a little reasonable and i say renee's gonna be back in a week can you just wait until then she seems surprised by this like she hasn't heard this news so i then explained things aren't really working out for phil so they're going back to arizona this doesn't appear to stop her though because she turns to leave out the door again and i turn to grab her again but then she says let me go charlie which were the same words renee said to me right before she left me so go ahead and knock me while i'm down she gets into the truck says she'll call me tomorrow and then drives off into the night my teenage daughter just ran away from me at least i know she's going to arizona but what the hell happened but you know what i don't have to worry for too long because the next day I get a call from Alice Cullen and you know what she tells me she says that Bella is currently in the hospital because she fell down two flights of stairs and then through a window um apparently the Cullens were able to meet her in a hotel in Phoenix which is where the accident occurred and now she has a broken leg four broken ribs cracks in her skull and is bruised all over so at this point me and Renee are talking and since Phil got signed to the sun she'll take Bella to Florida when she wakes up but when Bella wakes up she says she wants to go back to Forks so I let her. You know what, at this point I feel like I have no control over anything. I have no idea what's going on. If she wants to stay in Forks, whatever. I, I like the company. But you know, I try to implement some new rules, curfews, visiting hours, the works. But let me tell you something though, at this point, I hate Edward. If it wasn't for him, Bella never would have left in the first place. She never would have gotten into this accident. This whole mess would never have happened. But I do recognize that if Dr. Cullen wasn't in Phoenix, Bella probably would have died. So I'll give the Cullens that. But I'm officially anti-team Edward. I don't know what other teams are in store for us, but I'm anti-team Edward. She still likes him though for some reason and even ended up going to the prom with him. I can only hope they break up sometime soon. So summer passes and they're still together. Bella's in really good spirits and don't worry, I have some strict rules in place. I know that they're not doing anything scandalous. But God damn, Edward is so annoying. Then the school year starts up again, which means that Bella's birthday is right around the corner. Me and Renee get our nice little camera and a scrapbook. The big 18th birthday has arrived. Yikes. Bella still has to go to school that day, which is kind of good because she's not a big celebration girl. The thing is, in the night, Edward took Bella to the Cullens because they were throwing a little birthday bash. But you know, I'm fine with it because this whole thing was Alice's idea. And by the way, she's probably my favorite Cullen at the moment. The girl's an angel, nothing but the best vibes for her. She really helped Bella when she was recovering from all her injuries. Anyway, that night, Bella came home with a new bandage on her arm, just in case you've forgotten that this bitch is still clumsy. Bella's actually pretty busy these days with school and Edward and working for the Newtons. I noticed Bella using her new camera. She actually took 
some pictures of me and Edward. And I think one day I even saw her get the film developed. But then one day things took a very unfortunate turn. So I get home from work, Bella's truck's in the driveway, that's all normal. But she wasn't in the house. There was a note on the counter that said, going for a walk with Edward up the path, be back soon. And a little while later, I'm getting a little nervous. So I call the Cullens and nobody answered. So then I call the hospital and they inform me that the Cullens have disappeared. Great. So then I'm panicking and then night falls and I still have no idea where she is. I assemble a search party and have a whole bunch of people out looking for her. And Sam Yuli ends up finding her. She was just laying out there in the woods, curled in the fetal position, saying he's gone over and over again. I put Bella on the couch to let her rest. And when she woke up, she asked me where the Cullens went. And I was like, didn't Edward tell you? Wasn't this the whole reason you were in the forest in the first place? And she said, no. So this man, I'm assuming just brought her into the woods, broke up with her and then left with zero explanation. Is anyone team Edward at the moment? I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering. I told her that Carlisle took this big job in LA and then she started explaining how Edward didn't actually leave her in the woods and it was her fault because she tried to go after him. But then I guess the conversation was too much for her because she got up and left to her room. Y'all, listen, this next week was ridiculous. Bella was like a living carcass. She wasn't moving. She wasn't eating. I was so scared. I didn't know what to do or if I should bring in professionals because I was worried for her safety, her health. Then the nights were the worst because she would wake up screaming every night without fail. But then, you know, after that week of hell, which we don't mention, something shifted and she resumed her normal activities. She went to school, went to work, would respond if you asked her a direct question, but the life behind her eyes was gone. She was just going through the motions, trying so hard to look normal, but anyone could look at her and tell her that that was not normal. Months passed, October, November, December, January. Keep in mind, the screaming is still continuing every night, don't you worry. Then one morning, I just about had it. I slam my fist on the table and I say, Bella, that's it, I'm sending you to Florida to live with Renee. Like usual, she seems dazed and uninterested. Like she genuinely didn't know why I was saying any of this. But I was like, listen, I don't want to see you look this lifeless anymore. I don't even need you to be happy. I just need you to not be miserable. And I think that the best chance she has at that is if she leaves Forks. But she's stubborn as ever and she does not want to leave. So then I get mad and I'm like, listen, girl, Edward is not coming back. He has made no contact with you over these past months. You can't keep waiting for him. That really gets her though because she gets up and leaves the house mumbling something about going to see a movie with Jess Jessica in Port Angeles or something. I thought she was joking about that, but she actually didn't make it home in time for curfew that night. When she came back, I was waiting for her pissed because she'd never really communicated with me about this, but I saw something in her eyes that wasn't there before, like she woke up a bit. I thought forcing her to socialize with people she didn't really even seem to care about was not going to do anything, but maybe I was wrong. The next day, Deputy Steve hands me the phone and says that Bella's on the line and immediately I'm like, what's wrong? We've been having a bit of an issue lately with the gigantic bear sightings, so forgive me for being on edge. She says, don't worry, nothing's wrong. She just wanted the address to the Black's house because she hasn't seen Jacob in a while. This is fantastic. I love Jacob. This could be good for her. So I give her the address and when I came home, I almost dropped dead because I walked in to see her cooking dinner and smiling like a genuine smile. And you know what this means? I'm 100% team Jacob, baby. The boy's done wonders in what, one day? Apparently they just hung out in the garage and she watched him fix up this car. Nothing scandalous as far as I can tell. So then the next day she went over to his place and then that night I ended up getting invited for dinner and when I got there I saw them smiling laughing and holding hands now Bella and Jacob are inseparable they even set up bi-weekly study sessions Bella seems to be making good progress I'm liking this new routine except for the fact that one day I got a call saying that Bella landed herself in the ER because while she was hanging out with Jacob she tripped and hit her head and ended up needing seven stitches apparently she got this injury while hiking and I'm like since when do you hike and then I say regardless don't stray too far from town you know there's the whole bear issue then one day after her Jacob and I think Mike went to the movies, she got this really gnarly stomach bug. Then Jake came down with something bad and Bella tried calling him a bunch, but he wouldn't respond. So she had me call my good pal, Harry Clearwater, which after he told me about his heart condition, which was the real concern of the matter, he says that they've been having problems with the phone lines and that Jacob has mono. So Billy says no visitors. Mono. Bella seems unhappy about this and don't get me wrong, I am team Jacob, but I tell her not to be a pest and that Jacob will call her when he's better. A week later, sure enough, Bella says that Jacob is better and turns out he didn't even have mono. Great. But she says he's hanging out with his other friends. Uh oh. I can tell something is wrong between them. Hopefully they'll work it out. I suggest that Bella hang out with some of her other friends to take her mind off this because homegirl Loki isolated herself. When I got home from work that day though, Bella was not here. This is not what I meant. When she did come home pretty late at night, I might add she looked really shaken up. I already called the Stanley so I know she didn't hang out with Jessica like 
she said she would, so I told her to fess up. She said she ended up going hiking by herself. The one thing I told you not to do was go into the woods. She then told me the horrifying news. She ended up seeing the killer bear, except it wasn't a killer bear, it was actually five gigantic wolves. Well, shit, no more hiking for her. Then I remember that Bella had told me earlier that Jacob was gone for the day, but I was like, girl, here's what I saw. Literally today, he was out in front of the store with his friends. Not that I want to stir the pot or anything, but I just wanted to know. Also, he looked really strange, like he had a huge major growth spurt. What are they feeding that kid? Bella and Jacob are now really going through a rough patch, which is bad because I can feel her regressing. Then one day at the station, I get a call from Bella again, and she says she's worried that Jacob's been inducted into Sam Yuli's weird game. I was like, wait, Sam Yuli's cool though. He was the one who found you in the woods, and also Billy seems to really like him. She seemed really worried though, saying that Jacob was scared of him and stuff. But I say, look, Bella, I have a lot going on on my plate right now. Two tourists have now gone missing, so this wolf thing's really getting out of hand. So I think that she should just give Jacob some space. He has other friends, unlike some people. Then later I get a call from Billy saying that Bella got into a fight with Jacob, so she should be pretty upset. So I waited for her to get home and sure enough, she was pretty shaken up. She told me that Sam told Jacob that Jacob and her can't be friends anymore. So when Bella went up the stairs to get ready for bed, I called Billy to tell him the tea. And I said, look, I trust my daughter. So if she says something's going on with Sam, then I believe her. And then Billy went and blamed Bella for leading Jacob on. And so that made me pissed, obviously. The weird thing is though, the next morning, Bella seemed like she was rushing out the door to go meet Jacob. But then when I told her about me and a bunch of other armed people are going out to hunt the gigantic wolves, she changed her mind. The thing is though, later after work, I get a call from Billy saying that Bella actually did go and see Jacob. And so Billy invited us over for dinner. Apparently Jacob got a haircut, Bella and him made up, and this whole thing was a big misunderstanding. Okay, problem solved, I guess. Then things were pretty good for a while until Harry Clearwater had a heart attack and died. So naturally I was pretty busy helping Sue with the arrangements at the hospital all day. When I went back to the house, guess who was there to greet me? Bella and Alice Cullen. Thank God it's Alice and not the one who must not be named. So then Bella asked if Alice could stay over and I was like, sure, why not? I'm gonna be really busy with the funeral arrangements. It should be good for Bella to have someone there. The next morning while Bella was asleep, I gossiped with Alice about how the breakup affected Bella. Then I told her about how Bella's formed this new relationship with Jacob, which was kind of a warning, you know, so that Edward doesn't get any ideas. And I also told her, I was like, listen, girl, I'm kind of worried about how your visit is going to affect Bella because she was in a really bad place. And Alice expressed to me that she had the same worry, but she wouldn't come here unless she really had to. But you know what? All in all, I guess I'm glad Alice came. The next morning I went to the funeral and when I came back, there was a note. The note said, I'm with Alice. Edward's in trouble. You can grab me when I get back. I know it's a bad time. Sorry. Love you so much. Okay, so let me get this straight. One of my best friends just died and Bella says now it's a good time to go off to who knows where for who knows how long and for Edward. So I went to Jacob and I asked if he knew what was going on and all he told me was that she ran off with Alice and that Bella was in trouble. Well, no shit. I could figure that out from the note. Three days later of zero communication, zero sleep. I was worrying my butt off. A car pulls up to the driveway and Edward Waltz is out carrying a barely conscious Bella in his arms. He says that she's just tired and there's nothing to worry about. And I'm like, don't tell me what to do, bitch. After Bella gets into bed, I go and tell him that I never want to see his stupid face in this house again. Whenever Bella gets mixed up with the Cullens, something goes horribly wrong. When Bella woke up the next morning, I went to her room and asked her to give me one good reason why I shouldn't ship her off to Jacksonville right now. She says that I can ground her, do whatever I want, as long as she gets to stay in Forks. So I was like, girl, enlighten me. Where were you the past three days? She said that there was an emergency because Alice told Rosalie that Bella jumped off of a cliff and then Rosalie told Edward an accident implied to him that she tried to kill herself. And when he wasn't answering his phone, Alice brought Bella to talk to him in person in LA. Hang on, Bella jumped off of a cliff? Then she says she thinks the Collins are all officially back. Yay. Oh, and apparently the whole Edward leaving Bella in the woods to rot was a misunderstanding too, of course. So I told her, I don't want you seeing him. And she says either I let her see Edward or she moves out. Well, now you put me in a fucking pickle. So then things return to a sort of normal. I allow Edward to come to the house from only 7 to 9.30 PM under strict supervision. And I was just about settling into this new norm when Jacob comes up to the house with a motorcycle saying that it belongs to Bella. What the fuck? I still hate Edward. I don't trust my daughter. Jacob and Bella aren't speaking for some reason. Everything's shit. The wolf problem just seemed to vanish though, so that's good, I guess. I've noticed during all this time though that Bella has been on her best behavior. She's following through on all her obligations. Her grades are really good. She's applying to a bunch of colleges. So I tell her that she's basically free. I'm easing up on all the rules and restrictions. If she keeps it balanced, makes an effort to hang out with people, other than a Collins and uh, especially hang out with Jacob because he's my boy. Billy told me that Jacob is pretty depressed because I guess Bella has been ignoring him for him tattling on her for the whole motorcycle incident. So I say, listen, Bella, stop being a petty bitch. 
talk to my boy. Then I tell her she has mail and pull out the acceptance letter from the University of Alaska. I mean, it's far, but hey, at least it's an acceptance. Then Edward comes over and apparently he got accepted into a bunch of Ivies, but also the University of Alaska as well, of course. And here I was thinking he couldn't possibly accept an offer from Alaska if he got into like Dartmouth and whatever, but him and Bella seem to be pretty set on Alaska, which is troublesome. Then Edward finds out that Bella is no longer grounded and mentions a shopping trip to the city. And I say, no, Seattle is riddled with crime right now. I swear to God, if you bring her there, I will murder you, Edward. Then the next day, me, Edward, and Bella are eating dinner when Edward mentions that Bella last year got two plane tickets from the Cullens to go see Renee and they are about to expire. And I was like, hmm, she failed to mention that. <laughs> and then I was like, ain't no way I'm letting him go to Florida with her unsupervised. But as per you, she played the move out card and there was nothing I could do. I made sure to slip in a little birds of beast talk just to be safe though. So Bella and Edward actually went to Florida. And then when they came back, Bella started being better at the whole bouncing thing. It looked like things were really looking up. She hung out with Angela and even Jacob. Then one weekend, Esme called me to ask if Alice and Bella can have a prolonged sleepover. And I was like, sure, why not? As long as Edward isn't there. That came and went. And then when Bella came back, I alerted her that Jacob had a message for her. He said that he didn't mean it and that he's sorry and that he wants her to call him. Spicy. So I told her to be nice and give him a break because he sounded upset. Team Jacob is not looking so hot right now. Then the next couple of days, it seemed like Bella and Edward were fighting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then Bella asked if she could go to La Push for this bonfire party. And I'm thinking this looks great. Team Jacob is actually looking up right now. Although I think he kind of screwed up because not too long after Bella and Jacob came home and alerted me that Bella broke her hand punching Jacob in the face when he uh, kissed her. Anyway, only a small bump in the road for Team Jacob. Time sure flies because now it's graduation. The ceremony was cool. Billy and Jacob even came, which was super nice. Afterwards, I found Bella and suggested going to the lodge for dinner. And you know what? It must be my lucky day because Edward didn't even want to come. Then I drove Bella to the graduation party that Alice was throwing. It was supposed to be this big huge bash the whole town was invited renee was even supposed to come and when we arrived at their house they really did go all out those rich bastards bella looked nervous she likes parties about as much as i do so i drove off and left her in the dust the next day i came home to find alice and bella which was a nice change alice told me that their whole family was going on a camping trip without her and so i suggested that bella go over to their place to keep alice company and they both seemed to like that idea so bella went over to their place friday night and she supposedly spent the whole day saturday shopping with alice meanwhile i went over to billy's to watch the game but when I was chilling in La Push, it was weird because the whole time it seemed like Billy knew that something bad was gonna happen. And then wolves started howling like crazy. So I'm like, oh God, is the wolf problem coming back? And then Jacob got into a motorcycling accident. See, I told Bella with those damn motorcycles. Thank goodness they got over their prejudices and called the Collins to fix Jacob up. Edward actually even looked worried for Jacob despite their whole love triangle feud. I guess he's not like an atrocious man, but I still do not like him. When Bella came home, she was sporting a new dress, but she was pretty down because she'd heard the news about Jacob. But since I was there and I saw him, I told him that I think he's gonna be fine. Then, as soon as she could, she went down to La Push to see Jacob. Then she came back a crying mess because apparently she had to have a difficult conversation with Jacob and had to make a difficult decision. And I was like, girl, was now really the best time to tell him that your team Edward? Homeboy just got into a motorcycling accident. Anyway, then I tell her that I don't know why, but I feel like I'm gonna lose her soon. Call it the graduation jitters. Call it the fact that she's low-key in a toxic relationship with Edward. So I tell her that if she's gonna do something crazy, like run off with Edward, I'm not gonna do anything to stop them. I just want her to tell me so that I could say goodbye. Is that too much to ask? And she said she would. Yeah, right. So Bella and Edward are engaged and they're getting married in August. Right. I was so sure Renee was gonna give them a hard time because I'm fairly confident that one of her biggest regrets in life is marrying me so young, <laughs> but she didn't. So that was great. And in fact, she was very involved with the wedding plans. Oh yeah, and uh, Jacob went missing. He just vanished, he ran away. And the weirdest part is nobody seems to care except for me, like not even Bella or Billy. You know, I've just kind of accepted the fact that my life just keeps getting weird. Seeing Bella with a ring on her finger is weird. Seeing Bella driving around in that ridiculously expensive car Edward got her is weird. Weird. Bella got accepted into Dartmouth and would be heading there with Edward in the fall. Weird. The day of the wedding arrived and you know what? It was actually a very lovely ceremony. But you know, I'd never thought that I would see Bella get married at 18 to Edward of all people. Now I'm not team Edward by any means, but I can't lie. They do seem more than happy together. So I guess I can't complain too much. The guests are a combination of friends from Forks, friends of the Cullens, Seth, Sue, and Billy. The reception was also wonderful. I'm not gonna lie. And then that very night, Bella left for her mystery honeymoon. And before you ask, I wasn't crying when I said goodbye or anything. Turns out Edward brought her to a private island off the coast of Rio. And then like usual, everything went to shit. After a few weeks, even though the honeymoon was over, I couldn't see Bella because she caught this super rare disease in South America. And then when I talked to Bella on the phone, she sounded real bad. I kept calling her every day because I was so scared I didn't know what was happening to her. And then she kept sounding worse and worse and 
until she started sounding better. It turns out she ended up going to Atlanta to do tests with the CDC, but then I lost contact for a bit because the number the Cullens gave me wasn't working for some suspicious reason. I was starting to get real panicky when one day Jacob showed up at my front door. He asked me to go for a silly little walk. On this little walk, he told me that Bella is in town and she is not sick anymore, but things were a little weird. I was like, how weird? And then Jacob started to strip in front of me. Then I thought it couldn't get any weirder, but then he transformed into a wolf. I know, I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it myself. But seeing him, the huge monstrous wolf in front of me, it reminded me of that wolf problem we were having a year ago and I was like, oh my god. He said the world that I thought I knew was wrong. I asked him what any of this had to do with Bella and he said that she was sick but she had to change to get better. And I was like, okay, does she turn into an animal now or what? And then he said, no, she just looks a lot more like Esme than Renee. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? Then he started talking more about werewolves and how even Billy knew about this whole thing. And I was like, stop, 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 stop. I don't need to know any of the specifics. I was like, okay, at least tell me this. Did she know what she was getting into when she married Edward? And he was like, oh yeah, no, she's known about this stuff for years. Oh yeah, and then the real cherry on top is when he said that Bella and Edward adopted an orphan child. Okay, so then I was like, you know what? Here's the deal. I want to see Bella, but I want to know as little about this magic stuff as possible. He said, sure, I could see everyone for a little while as long as this whole thing wasn't too much for me. So I went to the Cullens and Carlisle opened the door, CDC my ass. And let me say, when I saw Bella, I almost dropped dead. I mean, she was beautiful, don't get me wrong, but so, so different. Then I saw the little girl in her arms and the little girl was beautiful. But I did see a resemblance to Edward and that got me a little suspicious, but he said she was his niece. Oh, okay, so I guess I'm technically a grandfather now. Great, great. But then the kid leaned forward and I saw her eyes for the first time and I was speechless. Those eyes, I kid you not, those were Bella's eyes. But I did the math in my head and it would not be possible for her to be their biological kid because like mathematically, it's just, she's too old for, for it, it doesn't make sense, whatever. I was lingering in their house that day because I was afraid that if I left that I wouldn't see any of them again for some weird reason. But fortunately, I was allowed to keep on coming back. Bella and I agreed that we should not tell Renee about this. This is not for the faint of heart. So it's sad that she'll never be able to see Renesme Carly Cullen. Goofy ass name, I know. I ended up spending a lot of time with the Cullens and Nessie and Sue in particular. We even had a lovely Christmas celebration at my house. So yeah, I guess except for the whole werewolf thing and the fact that Bella, I guess, is a supernatural being and that she's married to Edward and has a kid, nothing too crazy happened and we all lived happily ever after. Well, that was certainly an experience. As you can see, my boy Charlie is extremely atrociously out of the loop. Once again, thank you to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video and be sure to check out the links in my description to find snazzy eyewear that's right for you. I hope y'all had a good time watching this video and I will see you next time.